Wow, this ancient city builder absolutely surprised me. Hello again there friends and fans, Raptor here, and welcome to yet another new first look at some new content for ancient cities. Now with more European style buildings and changes to the map as well as some more attention to detail and realism with new maps added all over Europe. Welcome aboard and good to see you all here for a game that started out a little rough in 2023 in March. This one released into 1.0 but the developers are still fighting and trying to add much more content, realism, new buildings and more to make it the ultimate ancient city builder. Now we're big fans here on this channel of a game known by the name of Dawn of Man and so many people wanted the developers to continue the development of that but eventually that developer who made planet base and then eventually dawn of man went on to make a side scroller action platformer and so now ancient cities is kind of our most recent city builder taking place all the way back in the mesolithic era to the neolithic era at the moment but there's also many other promising city builders such as this one coming along as well as polylithic which has also been featured on the channel as well well if you'd like to see more of this game make sure you go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe and of course become members if you'd like to to see all sorts of brand new content now as i mentioned previously we have ourselves european mesolithic and neolithic eras and of course with the mesolithic era we can pretty much settle anywhere inside of the uh, territory which now has expanded expanded much further east i think before we were really limited to like southern parts of norway and sweden and finland and then i don't even think we were able to go much further uh, west, uh east than maybe the uh, ural mountains there and uh, parts of the maybe the alps I, I can't remember exactly how the map was shaped but we certainly were able to go to locations like uh, modern day uh, ireland and the uk and whatnot and parts of france all the way down to the um Mediterranean there but yeah now finally the map has expanded to the east which is really really cool now of course we have ourselves a 10,000 BC where everything is pretty much frozen over and is going to be the ultimate survival simulator in the Mesolithic era to which apparently we can start in 10,000 BC and work our way all the way up to the Neolithic era where you, again you can see the map kind of adjust a little bit we get a little less territory that way and uh, or maybe even more I'm not exactly sure but what's really interesting here is you can actually watch the uh, migration of European tribes from like for example the uh, southern parts of like Turkey or rather western parts but southern parts of the map here um, at least where we'll be limited and uh, you can kind of see where society spreads out a little bit and expands both east and west and north etc etc pretty damn cool anyway for today's purposes we're gonna be taking a look at the Neolithic era although the update does state that there are both new buildings for the Mesolithic and Neolithic era so that's gonna be pretty damn cool All right, we're gonna go ahead and start on normal we're gonna go ahead and turn off the tutorial for now and we're just gonna to use today's opportunity to take a look at all the things that are new and probably start somewhere near a large river where apparently there's more attention to uh, realistic rivers as to how they looked back in the day around these eras so we'll see how that rings true all right without further ado let's start ourselves a new game now i'm not going to edit anything here i want to see what the realistic load times are because oh my god <laughs> that was like immediate this game has gone through some real big changes in terms of optimization and it took a very long time to load the game back in the day and a very long time to get to this point as well in fact the developers have this large load screen right even before you get to the splash screen that is even more optimized now and of course the biggest recommendation is to optimize uh, and update your drivers to make sure you're playing with the latest and greatest equipment now we're playing with some modern equipment from 2023 as well as a 4090 so we'll see how all that plays into making this a uh, smooth ex example of a uh, good gameplay here uh, but the best that the game can be there should be other tribes eventually that will settle here so around the coast we may actually see some more tribes settling that we can trade with in the future but for now let's go ahead and maybe move to this um little point here with the rivers uh, converge oh actually right there would be perfect so we're gonna have the yana tribe move over here and of course we can rename everything and make all sorts of changes as we want to but now our people will be uh, basically taking all these goods on their backs i think a group of about 21 people yeah are carrying all sorts of supplies like for example sticks and uh, hides and food and whatnot with them for shelter and, and food and things like that uh, meat i think is what they primarily got with them pretty cool now another great thing about this game is that the people in this tribe eventually of course can have children but the things that they specialize in for example if someone is a fisherman and the other one is a weaver um, that means that uh, those skills can be passed on to their children and so thus things like woodworking and hunting and um, 
cooking and whatnot are all going to be passed down from family to family, which benefits the tribe. Everyone will fight against Mother Nature's elements all together. You can kind of see some of their uh, little uh, things here, mostly Happy Tribe and uh, Beginner Game. Looks like we're, I guess, playing in the Beginner Game mode, which is fine by me, in order to... Uh, kind of see some things here all right well let's go ahead and uh, speed up time and let's try to see some of those new buildings we're going to try to at least get one of them built but keep in mind that this game is designed to take a little bit longer than you'd imagine there's a lot less to build here but there's a lot more content than ever before there's now realistic farming and uh, there's animal husbandry and the ability to build many more shelters with this housing update so i'm happy to see it and i want to praise the devs on continuously adding more stuff in fact just recently uh, within like the last couple of weeks i wanted to take a look at the optimization for the game and it's gotten really damn good i mean they've really been paying attention to a lot of that and other games that have been featured on the channel like farthest frontier although uh, much more positively received on steam and many more positive reviews for it still has optimization issues of its own but even those developers are working on making that even better what are we looking at here? This seems to be some sort of a, maybe a graphical glitch as things load in. Oh, here we go. Uh, please choose where you want to start on this map. Well, let's go ahead and pause then and take a look at the map. Wow, there's the uh, area where the river uh, converges into one. Let's see which way the water is flowing. I'm assuming towards us, possibly. Let's take a look. Oh, we have to actually settle. Well, this is a really good map. We've got a lot of reeds, which are great for home building. And we're about to see some of those homes, too. We've got some large rocks, beautiful trees, and in a game where, of course, there's nothing going to be built, and we won't be able to really see the other tribes that we'll directly be uh, trading with or interacting with, the landscape should look beautiful. Now, something that used to happen in this game, too, is that wherever you would choose to start your settlement like this, the people would just randomly spawn on the map, but now they've given us this little arrow to basically tell our people, hey, deploy all your stuff here well there's no better spot i think to build than over here we've got plenty of open land plenty of trees and lots and lots of reeds and fresh water which would be perfect for drinking but even more important for fish which we might be able to do year round especially in the winter now that's going to be our goal today as well to, to try to at least get some shelters up for the winter so let's go ahead and get our people uh, started over here and we'll start building some of our shelters nearby let's go right over there perfect 21 people showing up out of nowhere look at that teleportation totally not realistic at all wow look at the uh, beautiful leaves and whatnot blowing through the air though like pollen and things like that very nice okay well the uh, point of the game here the most important thing is to try to assign everybody into efficient work groups and get everybody to do everything that they can do in order to have the tribe survive and thrive let's go ahead and try to start with there we go looking at the new things here straw pit hut uh, a stone pit hut we also have a pelt pit hut reed huts oh these are kind of some other older things here but it looks like we have some new homes like a medium house there and a long house which i'm not exactly sure what's new all in total but the uh, stone pit hut and straw pit hut are completely new to me i've never seen those before and we might be able to see some of those in the mesolithic era which takes place a little prior to this. All sorts of food production buildings. We, of course, want to start with a fireplace, a, a place for everyone to gather around for uh, meals and for cooking. And so we'll go ahead and build that maybe um, right down here in the middle-ish area. And wow, look at that. There's actually like a log there that people can sit on too. A great touch in this game that I've always enjoyed is whenever we build a like workshop or whatnot or assign people to craft tools and weapons, They'll find like a stone nearby and sit down and actually like do some whittling and other things like that. So that'll be pretty cool. All right, let's lay out our camp before we get anybody started on building. Uh, I really wonder what the uh, benefits of this are. So one thing to pay attention to here in this game is that the amount of sleep and uh, other bonuses are very important here. Uh, typically the worst shelter that you could ever build is like this small straw hut and that's really for just like an emergency situation where maybe some people have migrated to the camp and you don't have a lot of supply at all but you want to give them something to live in and so thus this is probably the best thing you can do with sleep actually being very horrible uh, but the best thing you can build is probably this the uh, log house the medium house which keeps going up to the top but essentially that's something that gives plus 30 percent sleep rather than negative 40 and so that's going to be made out of log and mud and rope and stick and straw and uh, kind of the same with the long house too which is a different amount of material but at plus 10 that's good 
Mud Roundhouse is for seven. The large building there is for nine. So, of course, more bang for your buck for that, but a lot longer to get to. And the Stone Pit Hut only housing three. Now, traditionally, we've been building the pelts, or we will build those first, since our people on their backs have carried over all those sticks and, uh, and pelts from... Uh, their travels as a nomadic tribe. So we're going to go ahead and try to uh, maybe build ourselves a... Oh, that's kind of cool. Uh, we're going to try to build ourselves a camp here. And we're going to try to put down maybe... We have 21 people, so there's no way we could build enough homes for them within the first few days. Each of these will hold three, so it's going to be a long time to get everybody housed. But I will say with pride that this game finally... It's a lot easier to build things, and it takes a lot less time and a lot more can be done in a short time too so we're going to start with maybe um maybe four homes here and see if we can get those done and in that time hopefully have our people also grab things like reeds and straw to build better homes and gardens what okay so let's go ahead and build those four and that little campfire we're also going to tell our people to build some things for food preservation so we can try to start building the uh dryer which will allow us to hang fish and meat in order to then uh, be preserved or at least to store it we can then have fresh fish hang here for just a little bit and then bring it over to the fire for example for cooking so let's go ahead and build two of those and uh, a lot of this will be put on hold i'm kind of just laying things out for now while wow, lumber mill a mud oven too so we can make bread farming is now a big part of the game and very cool to be able to make the, the developers seem to be able to make the coolest looking uh, settlements and whatnot. Obviously, they've been playing and testing for a long time, but I've seen a lot of people in the community building stone walls. But there's also defensive structures that you can build. I, I don't think we'll be attacked or invaded, but there is the possibility of building some rather uh, large walls like palisade gates and palisade walls. So basically logs, stacking those up uh, and uh, making it so no one else can get in. Well, we got some religious buildings too. That's cool. Uh, different types of altars, and I think a big Karen, too, a passage tomb, that's what it is. And uh, a couple of other megaliths and many years and whatnot. Okay, let's go ahead and try to build a storage area for our people. We're going to build like a quote-unquote warehouse, and that's, uh, you know, uh, basically just dumping stuff on the ground. And we could do so by, like, lassoing or by building squares. So I'm going to go ahead and build on the other side of this log and try to do these kind of smaller 4x4 areas. And this will allow us to store things like plant fibers, sticks, stones, uh, large stones, things to build houses, things to build tools. And we're going to need houses to build tools and uh, tools to build houses, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Get everybody housed so they can work longer. And uh, yeah, the more energy we give our people, the better. All right, let's go ahead and go with that. Great, so we have nine little squares there. We can assign all of those. Speaking of assigning two, uh, it is spring. 1555 BC uh, we can see the time of day work and resting time for everybody we can change that with the temperature being 12 C so it'll get warmer and then obviously brutally cold let's go ahead and uh, also add to our people uh, where do we set our tribe rules there should be a way where we can set rationing uh, there it is uh, we want to make sure everybody works so anybody of older age except for the very elderly will be working today including the children who will be using this opportunity to learn these skills as basically apprentices in order to, well, learn survival. I mean, the earlier the children can learn to pick berries, which ones to pick, which ones not to, I mean, that could be the difference between life and death, including that with mushrooms and many other things. We're going to increase our labor time so everybody works for a very long time. Uh, we want to get these houses up ASAP, and we're going to try to ration a little bit until we get foods, and uh, we're going to set communal tasks to... Uh, more to be focused on the groups. Uh, more to, hey, follow what you're assigned to do rather than taking individual initiative. All right, so you can see here that we can have people work in building groups. They can chop down wood together. They can do crafting, such as maybe making tools and weapons. And then the farming groups, which will work to both fertilize and cultivate and harvest. Fishing groups, of course, they'll do fishing. Ga gathering is very important because that is not just food, but also for things like sticks and stones. So building materials as well. So the gathering group is probably what we'll make the most of. And then herding and hunting groups. So those will be, uh, hunting will probably be uh, around the same time as fishing. All right, let's get to gathering. We're going to go ahead and name this group. We can go ahead and just name this building materials. This will be our building group. And we know that they're gathering based on the label. 
So we're going to go ahead and have maybe, uh, oh boy, let's have, um, what is that across the top? Three, six, seven. So we'll have uh, 11 people, I think, working on this group out of 21. So that's a massive majority of our people. But we're going to have them go and gather regular sticks. Uh, we're going to have them gather raw stones. These will be used for our house building. We want them to also gather plant fibers. If we can, we'll also have them grab uh, some straw and then maybe some uh, other things too. Logs, no. Flint core, no. And maybe some raw fine stones to make tools eventually. Okay, let's go ahead and assign these things then to our warehouses. So we do know uh, that we want to store, again, the plant fiber. We just got to remember here the... Uh, what was it? Uh, there's mud. We can gather that later. Wood planks, reeds, no. Rope we'll store here. That'll be a finished product from the building groups that will make that. Uh, we also want raw stones. We'll also be storing regular sticks, fine sticks, which is a refined stick that is basically whittled down to be really uh, straight and and, uh, and strong and sturdy. Um, let's go ahead and do a straw pit there. And then also we might want to store... Oops. We might want to store a few of our extra um, pelts and whatnot. I did cancel that one, but we'll bring that back in just a moment. Um, I think that might be it for now. We'll leave the other three on a side. Now, we can also work on this game. Spoilage and whatnot is very important in this game, so we can work on uh, storing a lot of that stuff very quickly. Uh, we can, of course, work on putting things in pits and uh, store things in haystacks. Of course, hay, straw... I think this game combines straw and hay into the same thing. Of course, straw is kind of more of a building material or used for bedding, and hay is used for food. So um, I think that sh should be it. Let's get started, and we'll kind of monitor things and do as we wait and kind of watch how everybody acts. Now we'll also have to set up a group for crafting, so we'll get that done in just a moment. But let's see what everybody gets to work on. Yep, immediately coming over here to the uh, little warehouse district and... <laughs> Immediately starting to remove all the grass, which will become straw, and then we'll store that somewhere, too. I think there's actually a spot where we're storing that already. We can build a haystack, too, but that'll just take more, I think, fine sticks in order to build, so it just takes a little bit. But good to see our people immediately starting on work. Very good. Very nice. Listening to the sounds there, we got birds chirping. All the sounds of people just, I think, literally ripping grass out of the ground by hand. Pretty impressive. Okay, and we got people laying out all the materials here, too. Oh, right, even for these homes. Even for these homes, they have to rip out all the grass, and then they're going to deliver all those materials, too, that we might already have some of. Let's go back to our tribe, set up another group. Let's go ahead and have a craftsman group. We'll have maybe four people in that. We're going to have them make ropes for home building and find sticks for home building. And then also we're going to have them work on making bifaces, which are going to be for cutting things too. Uh, and I think we can set maximums here. So we'll do like maybe five bifaces. And then we're going to do uh, probably like, boy, I don't know, like 25 sticks and 25 rope. There we go. Oh, and the bifaces, I just want five, please. There we go. And what is this? Oh, we've already reached the limit of uh, fine sticks. Um, okay, well, that's fine. Then work on something else. All right, so the craftsmen will be working now, too. People will be joining those groups automatically over time. And then we'll need to start a food gathering group. But homes are a little bit more important. We do have some food with us, so our people will be able to uh, survive that way. Actually, if we click down here... You can see that we have uh, content, not the content that you're watching, which is awesome and amazing, I'm sure. I'm sure you've left a like and told me how beautiful and amazing I am, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. Uh, but yes, we have all of our building materials here, so we have, uh, oh yeah, they brought dried fish. So we have some dried fish, one, well actually that's interesting, it says one fish and 157 dry, yeah, if we hover over that it says 157, not sure why it says one, it could, it could just be type. Um, but anyway, plant fibers... Uh, reeds, fine raw stones, raw stones. Actually, that was uh, fine sticks, yep. And then also raw stones. So you're going to see people doing a lot of cool, crazy stuff. So just keep an eye on that lower left corner for all the content down there. And uh, 
yeah, food should be fine for at least the next couple months. We'll probably see them get um, a little lower closer to winter, but by then we should be fishing on our own. Uh, it's cool. We're actually down river too, so the, the water is flowing this way. So that's kind of nice. It'll flow past our village and down that away. We can also assign people to do building too, so we can assign a building group. So what are we up to? Tw uh, we're up to 15. And I think we can actually assign the building group to do multiple projects themselves. So we can assign them to basically construct multiple homes here. And uh, we also can do the uh, fire pit. And we can make it so that way everyone else kind of just drops off materials. But these will be the folks in charge. I think they might actually be in charge of also going to get that stuff. But we'll let everybody kind of sort it out over time. Everybody's kind of, I don't know, they're, they're just picking whatever job they want to do. Oh, wow, we've already got the drying racks up, too. Nice. And we should be storing straw over here, too. Oh, but they've got... Um, what's interesting is they've got these rolled-up things of straw. Are, are, are those logs? That can't be logs. No, no. That's got to be reeds, I think, actually. So let's go ahead and store those, too, since they brought those with them. Uh, that should be right here. Yep. Important. That's going to be very important for building roofs. Uh, right now, it's just pelts, so... That's going to be, again, not the best ho house, but it is um, something we can easily get from hunting. And uh, it's going to be a, a great starting house for us out of 24. And I forget exactly how many we can build, but I'm just going to start with four houses. If we can't afford it, we can always retool. And those building materials are recyclable. You tear down a building and build a new one and they'll figure it out. Look at that. There we go. Love it. People sitting down on the logs and doing a little whatever. Oh yeah, you can actually see this person making ropes. Very nice. Good work. I don't know why they're not down here closer to that, but maybe that log's a little too small. Regardless, we should have our first home maybe by tomorrow morning. The game does, or it used to have a really difficult uh, day-night cycle where it was just impossible to see at nighttime. You couldn't do anything. On one hand, that's realistic. On the other hand, it's uh, kind of a city builder, and it's just kind of hard to be able to play without being able to see. I don't think we need that last one there. That's just showing our groups. but uh, So we can see knowledge now. So as we do more and more things in the camp or as people move in, we can be taught different things. So things like, uh, and it's all random. We could have a group that's really good at woodworking and very good at hunting, but not know anything about farming. And so as more people move in and they're like, hey, I want to contribute to this uh, community. You know, like, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And people are like, all right, well, you can come on in, teach us how to farm, you know, that kind of thing. So good stuff. All right, let's speed up time a little bit so we can see something here. And let's try to build one of the new homes. We'll let them take their time here as we go back to the build menu and try to pick a... Well, we could do the uh, pelt putt... <laughs> That's hard to say. The pelt, the pelt pit hut. There we go. Uh, the ones we're building right now are a negative 30, but this hut is a negative 20. And requires a bit more leather at 10 each of these costs only five though so this is uh, going to be 5 10 15 20 so we have 24 so that's the number that we can make so maybe we could start with something like, wow 175 raw stone you know you think this uh, stone pit hut would be perfect for like um, maybe being like a, a granary or a storage barn because it's going to be uh, really sturdy probably cool and uh, well of course like you know really well defended so and uh, nobody can light it on fire. You know, a standing torch, we can build that. That's nice. So we can decorate the camp with lighting. That's cool. We also have, of course, uh, large benches and whatnot. People are getting ready for bed here. They'll just sleep on the ground. What else are they going to do? Oh, wooden trail. We can build roads. Or at least have, like, a main street through the uh, camp. Let's see. Lots of sticks for uh, fences. We can also start our farmland, too. But we're going to do that a little bit later. This is what I was looking for here. The storehouse. And then I think there's also uh, a granary. Well, the storehouse is for food. But you can put anything in there, I think. And keep some things dry. Like those rocks, you know. Otherwise, they'll mold. You don't want, you don't want them to go bad. They could spoil. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and speed up time. At a certain point, the game will kind of skip nighttime for us automatically. And just go right back to day. And so I'm not even sure what time it is. But I don't know, midnight right now. 
work and resting time. Where did everybody go? Oh, they're hanging out over here. Oh, they're just they're just jamming out. Should actually try to give our fire a priority. Eventually our people will come over here to make meals. Uh, right now we're, of course, eating dried fish, so we don't really need to dry anything or cook anything. Uh, but once we start catching fresh fish, which we'll probably set up a group for that too, then they'll start bringing that to the dryers. Let's go ahead and set up a fishing group. And we don't want anybody in it yet. But that'll just be a reminder for later. And then we also want a group for gathering food. So we'll put that on our list. And nobody assigned yet. But we will be able to gather seasonal food. So we have ourselves beetroots, berries, clams, hazelnuts, honeycombs, mushrooms, pine nuts, pulses, roots, rose hips, and then any sort of raw meat that they can find that perhaps the hunters have left behind, that kind of thing. The hunters will hunt and then... Uh, basically field dress the animal and then bring some of the things back like I think the hides or you'll have the gathering team do that but that's all good for that so we'll have them gather whatever later on right now it's just work 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 get those houses done and you can already see the first house going up now I want to try to build one of the new houses we could at least lay it out and I think maybe our best bet will be maybe one of the straw pit huts so we'll try to build that maybe over here now as you'd imagine it's going to take a lot of straw. But it's good for the first year. Now, I think what this is, is maybe they're terraforming and digging out the dirt underneath to kind of create a little bit of a shelter. So less walls and roof and kind of more uh, digging down into the into the ground, which could be a lot cooler and or warmer based on things. I wonder if it tells us much more about that. Oh, yeah, a little bit. It says a small dwelling based on a, ho uh, on a hole in the ground to gain some space with a roof made of straw. That's pretty cool, actually. And that's probably going to be the same thing with the uh, yeah the other uh, other huts and whatnot. Now, I think I've seen some other buildings, too, in their uh, photographs that I think was maybe the longhouse. It looked to me to be almost like a barn. Uh, I'm not seeing anything like that here for storage or for farming, but typically, especially if we're playing games like Medieval Dynasty, a uh, large barn like that is going to be really useful, especially for these people. If they could turn a barn into almost like a large food storage building and also maybe a processing building for threshing and such and keep everything inside, that would be good to process and store everything all in one building. Hopefully. Keep an eye on everything. Make sure it doesn't escape. All right, people going back towards gathering again. I think we can also designate areas to gather straw. Uh, is there not a... A reed hut that we can build? There's lots of reeds around here. We have a reed hut, but what I mean is these uh, pit huts. And it's only pelt, stone, and straw to start out with. So it's almost like the reed hut would be better uh, for our beginning part here, but that's fine. We'll kind of just keep an eye on everybody. So they're gathering straw for the new area, for the two new homes that we opted to build in. I, I love I love seeing the work actually get done. I, I'm amazed at just basically watching the people do their thing and to see things work in these groups. A different system from Don and Man, which is really nice to see. And there's another beautiful day. Sky looks really good in this game, too. In fact, I want to look around now to see if we can find some of the animals that we might be hunting. Well, there we go, right there. We can actually hunt wild deer and donkey and horse and, uh, well, other variants of those types of animals uh, earlier. Yep, there we go. Early day cows. Small game, too, like rabbits. I think maybe possibly birds. Let's see what the hunting group can actually do. We'll need to gather some weapons for that, but we should be able to set it. Oh yeah, there we go. So we have wild boars, hares. Uh, we have deer, wild horse, wild goats. Oh, even rats. We have uh, muffins. 
The Urox and the uh, Wild Dogs, too. Oh, boy. Uh, so, yeah, all sorts of different types of game. You can also set it to either large or small. And I would really love to be able to hunt mammoth in this game, too. Just like in uh, Dawn of Man would be, be outstanding. Let's go ahead and take a look over here. Back at our camp. Hey, look at that. Three houses already done. Man, I'm telling you, it used to take a very long time to do any of this stuff in this game. And they've just made it that much better. Although, to be fair to my uh, to them as well, my, myself, I was stubborn and wanted to build the big buildings first. Because, well, why not? Like, let's go for the big ones. But uh, by then, everybody would have to... You know, you'd come down from... Uh, I, I'd find a fortified position near a river would be, like, up on a really huge mountain. And so everybody would have to go down the mountain to the water's edge to gather reed and then all the way back up. And it would just take days and days and days just to get basic building materials. So uh, really well advised, too, that you don't start where you want to build. Maybe start nearby, like over here. And then, you know, build temporary shelters and then start fortifying that position just to make it look cool. Again, there's no real raids or attacks or barbarians or anything like that. Uh, but still, to build a ancient city up on a hill and then fortify it and then have farms all around looks realistic and cool as hell. Now, the developers have show, uh, shared some saves with me in the past that were quite fun to be able to take a look and see everything that they had built. And it did certainly seem quite possible. But I'll be honest, at a certain point, uh, all you're doing is not necessarily moving forward, but just kind of expanding on what you've already got. So the biggest things that you can build in this game are the homes. And so they've expanded on that to build more variety of homes. But I would love to see more buildings that could double or triple as different types of things where, again, we would build one of those stone pit buildings, but then that could be used as a storage building or a small granary or maybe a... Uh, I don't know, somebody could be making maybe flour in there or something, you know, to, to grind that and um, be able to maybe make bread. Like, put all that together. Having external buildings would be cool, like the, uh, of course, the stone oven that we saw or the mud oven. But being able to do it inside a building would be cool, too. Um, of course, Don and Man did a lot of stuff like that. But it's not until you get closer to the copper, bronze, and the iron age that you start to see things like animal husbandry that then starts allowing for larger buildings to be built. And then, of course, you do things like having the... Uh, there's, like, outfitters and... Yeah, I don't know. It's really cool in that game to be able to build all sorts of different buildings to support all sorts of different labor. But in this game, I think it's more like a value between, well, only shelter for people to live in, like, for example, to go home, have a meal, and sleep, and then to do everything else outside. Although, of course, there are some buildings to be able to do things... Uh, but they're more like, not necessarily buildings, but tools that are buildable. Like, for example, if we look back at the um, the builder squad or whatnot. Uh, what do we say here? Uh, yeah, the builders. So if we take a look at all the things that they can build, uh, it's just things like threshers and uh, pelt tanners. So nothing too crazy. No, no building that's like a barn or whatnot. But we will need to put a couple tanners down too, though. I think we'll be hunting shortly. So let's go ahead and get that started too. And of course we'll be going for more pelt homes. Maybe we'll try to get a pelt hut up as well. But I just wanted to lay these things out. I've, I've got to say, every time I've played this uh, since launch over this year, it has gotten better than ever before when they were in early access. Um, now that the game is released, I guess, and they're getting some funding from people making purchases and whatnot, and getting a lot more feedback directly from everybody, um, I think that's a really good sign of them trying to do more for... Uh, delivering on the things that were on roadmaps and also to try to take user feedback and then try to make uh, whatever people want the f first. This game literally used to not have hunting. This game didn't... I, I think maybe it was fishing and there was definitely gathering, but there was... He the hell no could you hunt. No way. No farming. Very limited homes. It was like, wow. Um, I think they wanted $50 for that at the launch and uh, in, in early access and people were just... They just thought they were insane. So I think that contributes to a lot of the mixed reviews. But I would certainly recommend anybody who's played this before, definitely give this another shot and then think about your review too to make changes to it, uh, whether it be good too bad, whether it be from uh, you know not recommended to recommended or whatnot. But that would certainly give the devs a lot of good feedback and or just to jump into discords. And honestly, the comment section down below for a lot of you who played this or, you know, your opinions on these games do matter and developers do check them out. So, you know, give some good constructive criticism on what you'd like to see, what they're missing and what 
uh, they, you think they should prioritize. And I do the same with these videos. And it is a great time that we live in, in almost, I can't believe I'm, I'm saying this, almost 2024. Yeah. It's almost 2024, and now we've got discords and, uh, you know, three million different types of social media that devs can connect with us, and we can report problems and try to make things better and try to get uh, things to be real nice. Wow, we're not seeing a lot of people outside, not as much as we had before. They're moving into these houses, although I'm not sure if they're at home at the moment. This is recreation time. People are opting to be outside during the uh, heavy rainstorm. Some people are inside, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody's just kind of chilling outside. All right, well, now we've got a fireplace there, uh, which is cool, but we're going to build a few more of those to give our people multiple opportunities to make food, not just one location. We can build a small fireplace, fireplaces, or standing torches, which, um... Hmm. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll build torches first. This is cool, though, because it does provide light for the, the user. I'm not sure if our people will actually want that, but or really benefit from that. Another great thing about this game is just like in Foundation, which is a medieval city builder, uh, our people, where they walk the most, will start to create paths. So as they walk back and forth, you can almost see it right now. There's kind of like a clearing to where everybody's been walking to go gather materials and then come back. And uh, they've almost created like a highway coming back into the camp. While well, to speed things up, we're going to let them build uh, all sorts of stuff like that. And we're going to wait for day. Oh, you can actually see them digging it out a little bit. That's very nice. And good music, of course, when we go into the more fast-forward mode. And, of course, we can also see things from the world map, too. We'll kind of go into Tier 2 now on speed. So, yeah, um... We can go back to the world map and we can have our people move again if you settle in a place that you don't necessarily like. You can always move from that location to another. It's kind of nice that way. Be able to uh, migrate as your people once were nomadic. They're certainly used to that. Very nice. Bum, bum, bum. I'm just kind of watching to see what everybody's doing down there. They are digging. But I wonder if that actually creates any sort of soil that we can utilize. They're just digging out the pits, I guess, in the middle and using that soil around the outside in order to reinforce. But I'd be curious to know if that, if any sort of like uh, digging of these pits provided something we could store and then maybe use it as uh, fertile soil for something else. Like, for example, farms. Pretty cool. Hmm, another beautiful sunny day. Now, we're getting closer to... We're in mid-spring now, and summer obviously is on the way. And I'm just wondering if we should start fishing now and start making some tools. And we should, we should certainly have our uh, crafting team start working on that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and have the crafters... The crafty crafters start crafting some tools that we can utilize, such as a wooden trident. So the wooden tridents now will be used for fishing. And, uh, oh, it's actually block. Oh, that menu's actually blocking. Okay. So we'll have to put these here, maybe. It'll make it a little easier. And let's go ahead and make ten of these. There's certainly going to be something we want a lot on hand for. So now we're preparing for food. Uh, but we need tools for that first. So let's go ahead and make sure we've got everybody uh, some spears. And actually, I think in this game, too, a cool thing is, is that you can use a... I thought it was... Oh, you can't. Okay. Uh, you can only use it for fishing. I, I thought there was a way where you could use it for both. Oh, this one is. The, wood, the traditional wooden spear can be used for hunting and fishing and sewing and tilling. So it's basically a stick with multiple uses. So that... <laughs> That's in high demand, man. That is uh, really in high demand. But the wooden trident gives you a much higher chance to get fish. We'll also need uh, some bone knives and things like that. But in order to get bones, we'll have to start hunting. So we'll make those uh, little uh, spears first. Not enough flint cores available. All right, let's have our 
Harvesting team, go find those. And what's wrong with this? Don't tell me it's like a lack of sticks or something. Not sure exactly. But let's go ahead and have our crafting, rather gathering team go find more of that stuff. So let's do... Um, building group, yeah. And we'll go ahead and add flint core to that as well. Adding it to the shopping list. Now what about the food team? What are they finding? Oh, nobody assigned at the moment. Let's go ahead and do three. And some of these things are out of season. Not everything can always be found at the same time. I think mushrooms are found in the or maybe it's hazelnuts that are found in the this the autumn. Forget exactly what the timing is on everything, but yeah. Ah, oh, the music is so nice. So two of those houses now at the bottom are almost done. I'm, I'm also going to have to assume that the two pits at the bottom that the, we're digging for those homes are actually meant for, uh, or ra rather are the same design. Like for example, they're not different sizes whether or not we're building with straw or pelt or stone. Uh, but the, of course, frames are different. And they're actually building what, what is it called, waddle or waddle? Uh, they're building the uh, basically woven sticks here for one of these straw pit huts. It's really cool to see these things going in. It's got me excited for Manor Lords and other games like that. It's cool to see, um, you know, medieval buildings be constructed out of iron tools and have nails and things put into place. But here everything's kind of just, like, either tied together or is just kind of mashed together in a way where it likely won't fall apart. But it's still cool to see. Now, this one uh, hut here won't get complete because each of these were, what, 5, 10, 15, 20? Oh, actually, that's not the case. It should be able to be constructed, but they're waiting on more material. But our people are doing multiple constructions at the same time. So that's good. Got a lot of iron stone. We need more fine sticks. So let's go ahead and add more people to the... Uh, let's take a few people off the building group. We'll reduce that to, like, what, seven? Oh, let's do six. There we go. So that's six people. It is. And then we'll go back to the uh, craftsman. Add a couple people to that. And the fishers. I hope we have some tools ready. We'll I think they'll actually hunt by hand. They'll actually go fishing by hand if we don't have uh, any sort of spears. It's possible. Not not a great idea, but it'll it could work. And we're also going to ask our people to endlessly dry fish here. And eventually we'll change one of them to meat, but we'll just have them hang all that dried fish there. Now, as for the preservation of stuff before we build our storage hut, uh, we can also build, you may have seen this earlier, uh, these decorations of sets of baskets and pots are actually also present under storage, so we can put things into uh, clay containers and baskets so of course that uses straw and then we can take those things and uh, put anything in there we can also dig a pit and store things underground too so we can store uh, clams berries whatever and we can you know try to store some of those things here so we'll put our food maybe over here somewhere near the main road <laughs> roads we're building ourselves some roads now, of course, there is all sorts of ways to uh, prioritize things and uh, make it so one thing builds more than the other. But what I really want to do here today is not necessarily use this as a tutorial on just how to play the game, because many of you might be new, so welcome aboard. It seemingly is a pretty neat game so far that keeps getting better. But for those of you who've uh, seen it before, I mean, these are the things that are new, including these buildings. And that's really what I want to, uh, what I want to see is because we don't have a lot of tools here. We're not going to be building churches. We're not going to be building overpasses and you know skyscrapers we got to start from nothing but imagine starting in 10,000 BC and working your way up to this point and then just like starting to learn farming I mean that's gonna be insane if you're able to make a civilization that lasts that long whoo some of the new buildings getting done so these might be really worth it you can see where they have the where the walls are mostly 
obviously dirt and so this might be a much better way to build at the very start of the game that could be an even better early tactic rather than these pelt huts which I just built out of uh, kind of a tradition or like habit now these give a negative 26 for the pelt huts this one only gives a negative 14 holds four but again it has 10 leather so these are probably something you'll upgrade to later these uh, pelt huts might be good for once you've started to uh, farm I mean hunt uh, after hunting that's probably when you start the farming that's what I would do anyway and 20 C so things are getting warmer And we certainly want to make sure we have housing for everyone. So we can continue to build more homes. Straw pits. Hmm. And yeah, we could build a couple homes over here too. I never have figured out really how I want to lay things out in this game because everything always feels so temporary that you can make changes at any time. So I guess there's no shame in building something that's kind of cookie cutter suburbia just to get people some homes and then eventually try to make things look nice. That's an area for a torch there. There we go. We'll build four of those, too. Now, people are going to move into the camp uh, maybe a few times a year, so it's always important to have extra homes than what you need. So always plan on building more. If you've got, you know, 21 people and you build housing for, like, 24 because the number sometimes can be off based on what you build, you may as well always build an extra home and have a couple extras on standby. In fact, at any point during this video, there could be a pop-up that I may have even missed that says like so-and-so is trying to move in or whatnot so you can always accept those people and they might bring animals too love the music one thing that's always stuck out to me too is that when we speed up time the music can almost become a little obnoxious when we, uh, I wish we had, you know, this is kind of a constant just pace of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, but like you speed it up and it just kind of gets louder, more aggressive, and it's like, I just hope we get more music in the future. Donna Man, of course, has some pretty good songs, and this is cool, but th to have options to listen to a soundtrack would be nice too. It would really give the game kind of a fitting... I don't know, it would just be fun to play it on a slower pace. What I think you want to do in a game like this is certainly lay everything out, have everything kind of prioritized and building from 1 to 10 or something like that, and then just kind of let it go, and then pause again. So you lay everything out, have people build it, and then you kind of just wait for it to be built over time, and then you wait for them to uh, essentially enjoy it, more people to move in. And, you know, a lot of these city builders are like that where... Everything that you do is dictated by a lack of population. So it's like, well, you want to build the big old furniture factory or the barracks, but you just don't have enough people to work there. So it's like, well, you have to wait then for, you know, if you need 10 people, you want to wait for 20 then. You'll have, like, everybody build it really quick and then have 10 people build the building and then you'll have 10 left over for the next project. Because it's always a good idea never to have zero unemployment or less workers than what you need. And that's very apparent when it comes to games like Donna Man, where you always want to have extra hands. Everybody ready to go. Very good. Very good indeed. Oh, very bad. Very bad indeed. A big O storm! Wow. Not too bad, though. But that's why we're building all these houses. Is it going to storm this whole day? Let's see if it dies down. I'm not actually sure if rain will do anything for uh, crops, but uh, certainly could be a good thing. That's cool to see, though. Big O storm. Coming down hard. Oh, 
Oh yeah, look at him dig. Now I wonder if the digging is made faster by having like bifaces and other tools. I don't really see any sort of building tools that the uh, that the uh, craftsman can really make for us. It's more cutting tools. If we take a look then at the uh, yeah at the craftsman tools here, we've got ourselves a stone axe, which I guess you could use pretty much any of these tools to dig with, really. Um, I mean, not all of them, but uh, obviously the biface is basically just a giant shovel head, really, anyway. So, yeah, there you go. All right, guys, well, that is all I wanted to uh, say about this game for now. A big surprise out of nowhere with, with some more European-themed buildings uh, that really are cool. I have certainly have missed a lot of things that are present here in the recent update, but I hope to see a lot more from this game in the future, including more things to build for religion. There are some buildings here, like passage tombs, and those are really cool, almost like large homes. But that's what I was mentioning about things like the stone pit huts and whatnot but those take so many rocks 175 so hey it's all dependent on where you build so let me know what you think about the game down below in the comment section thank you very much for subscribing and i'll see you all next time for more ancient cities goodbye buddy i'll see you next time